Don't be scared. You don't have to be out of here by 12 today. That was a powerful teaching. My message today is entitled, We Need to... We need to take the next step for our church. Some people might think, and some people, a lot of people have asked me, when, when, will, you ever, <clears throat> when will it ever be enough for you? It says, I will stop changing the day you put me in the casket. But until that, then, no. If you don't learn, if you don't keep learning, if you don't keep growing with the Lord, that means there's something wrong with us. Something really, really, really wrong. This church is going to be the same by Christmas as it is today. We might as well shut down. We need to continually to learn and make changes. When I was full of the devil, <clears throat> I was so creative, I had new ideas every single day. I would never run out of ideas. So now that we are full of Jesus, we should have more, more creative ideas than we, we ever had before. The book of Acts, chapter 2, 17. It talks about the last days, what's, what's going to happen. And I can clearly see that that's, we, we are at this point right now. Acts two seventeen, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall have dreams. Our sons and daughters should start prophesying. How come they're not prophesying? Do we, do we as parents stand in the way? I have a question. Shall be, shall be filled with the Spirit. They are. I, I can see it all over. You should, be, you, should, you should come to youth on Wednesday. That is fun. I don't know if the youth leaders will allow you, but I, I sneak in once in a while. And we should encourage our youth to share their visions and start prophesying. Because it's in them. And right now I want to pray and we want to release that. Stretch your hands and t towards the youth. And not just youth. It says old man and young man that should have dreams and visions. And that we will, I'm just going to pray that we will have new visions for this church. The Lord has taken us to, 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 turn, to, to a new season. The old season is, is done. Whatever the, the, it took to get us to here is not going to bring us to the next step. We have to have a new visions. Father God, I just thank you. And I thank you for youth and for not just youth, for seniors, for, for everybody, but brothers and sisters. And I just pray that we will get new visions, that you will empower new visions, new dreams, new prophecies over us, that we will be able to, to prophesy, prophesy and just see visions, and that we will, our, our spiritual eyes will be open, that we will be seeing, where do you want to take this church? How do you want to grow it? And what's, how we are supposed to lead it. Jesus, we trust you that you will do that. And if there's any bondage where we have bound our young people, I just want to break that off today in the name of Jesus. That they, that they will start prophesying. That they will start be, being bold. That they will start doing things what you want them to do. That they will see the things that, they, that, that you, where you want to lead them. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Galatians 1. Galatians ch chapter 1, verse 6. It says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to per pervert the gospel of Christ. 
we see so many churches today that pervert the gospel of Christ. I've been in churches like that. I've been a member from that, and I, ha and I have perverted the gospel of Christ too. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach, you, preach any other gospel to you than what, what we have preached to you, let him be cursed. We pervert the gospel to, to something else and we live on, under a curse and we wonder, why is nothing working for us? Why are we having all these troubles? And he, right to the next verse, he says, again he says, let them be cursed. And we live on, under curses. And we have so many people today that if you ask them, are, are you saved? Oh yes, the majority of Winkler would say, yeah, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Just borrow them some money. Then you'll find out if they're Christians. That's the easiest way to test a person's fate. The Bible says, by their fruits you shall know, not by their words. There are so many people say, oh, I'm on, I'm on my way to heaven. The fruits are all of the devil. But the mouth says, talks about heaven. When er Pastor Ernie prayed this morning about a wilderness. A lot of people say, well, Winkler, we should go invite people that, that, that are not, not Christians to come to church. Christian people, we should leave them alone. Would you agree that most of our neighbors are Pharisees? Are we there to go knock them on, on, on their doors and, and, and invite them to church? To invite them to get to know this Jesus that will never let you go back? It's not just the pastor's job, it's all of our jobs. We have been taught so many dumb things about religion. They say if they hit you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If they take your, uh, your jacket, give them your shirt. You know, that, that, that has a point where, where persecution comes. But religion has made a doctrine out of that. We shouldn't let, let people rule over us, whoever they want to. That's not even maybe what the Bible says. Paul, he went into the synagogues among the Pharisees. He started preaching. He, he didn't invite. He wasn't invited. and He didn't wait to be invited. He just did it. It's always been my dream that I'm going to go, one day I'm going to go, go into churches and I'm going to start preaching. Jesus did it. Paul did. Why wouldn't we? But we are too afraid. Let's change our mindsets. Stop being afraid. And I, I'm just praying. Like, and we see how evil comes into our schools and they take, they take over. They fight for it. They don't, have, they don't even have power. Christians have power. We should fight it in the spirit. Why are we Christians being so stupid and allow the devil to run our schools? We should take that back. We should pray over our kids, stand in faith for our kids, our kids are going to be saved. They are not going to be uh, intoxicated by the, by, by the evil in school. But we will take that back. We should fight for it. Am I confusing you, anybody? Romans 116. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. 
So Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. How come we are so ashamed of the gospel? We know all, uh, all of our neighbors, or most of our neighbors are being Pharisees. On the way to hell, what do we do about it? Sit at home and be ashamed? We need a lot of boldness for that. Monday, Pastor Ernie and I were on a plane flying back from uh, Vancouver to Winnipeg. And there was a bunch of gay guys serving us. The oldest servers, there were three of them, they were all gay people. Guys, older, older men already. Super friendly. They could have looked like Christians the way they served us. When that plane landed in Winnipeg, and you know when in a plane you don't, you don't run away. You are stuck on a plane. Pastor Ernie sat a little bit behind me, and all of a sudden I saw his head coming up from a seat and came up again. And all of a sudden he stood up and he started preaching. He said we should pray for those servers, servers that served us so good. You should have seen people started manifesting all over the place. I was kind of happy that Alma was on a different plane. Because <laughs> I ducked down when I already started preaching a little bit. He says, we got on this plane, we, we wanted to come to Winnipeg, and we got to our right destination. And he says, what about your spiritual life? Are you on the right track? Are you on the right plane? Will you get to the right destination? There's only hell or heaven. Which plane are you on to? And I said, okay, finally... People didn't know I was, that I was with him, so I, I, I got up. I asked, I started agreeing. <laughs> but do you know how much boldness that takes? Do you know how much courage that takes? And, the, and, the, and I see the plane is the best place to be through that because people can't run. You're stuck. The plane had stopped already. Everybody got up and wanted to get out. And you, you have, if you ever have travel on a plane, you know what it is. You have to, you're stuck, right? Where you, are. you don't go five inches back or forward. This, you're just stuck. And some, some dude gets up and he starts preaching. That was amazing. I have always wanted to do that, but I've never done that. Kind of a shame. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. Six verse two. I'll read one and two. Therefore, leaving the di leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not lying uh, not lying again. The foundation of repentance from dead works, and of the faith toward Christ. Paul says, let's stop laying the foundation over and over and over. This is what we hear. Most, most churches we hear, they, 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 they will preach about repentance, repentance, and repentance again and again and again. And that's where they're stuck. Verse 2 says, of the doctrine of baptism, of, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we, and this we will do, if God permits. Paul says we 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 don't want to stop here. We want to go on to perfection, and so should we. We should be learn learning and going on, moving forward. Not 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 building us, ourselves another rock uh, rot here that we will be going in the same rot, rot and we will be making creating another religion. Because religion is a stink. In God's nostrils. He wants true followers of Jesus. When God marks you, you will never be the same again. You can't be the same again. Whoever you have an encounter with the Lord. And some of us, we would like to have an encounter with the Lord every day, wouldn't we? They're good. 
But sometimes you have to do something if you have an encounter with the Lord. And then you need to do something that you, that, that, that's not so fun. Like two weeks ago, I was kind of complaining to the Lord. I says, uh, it would be nice like if you would uh, do the same thing with me with, uh, that you did with Elijah. It's, Life is tough sometimes, isn't it? And he says, uh, okay, are you ready to walk uh, for a 40-day uh, fast? And after that, go into a depression? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, I, I repent. I don't want to be a lot. No, no, no. That's, that, I don't want to do this. I says, yeah, Lord, but you know, people treat us like we are the 10th plague of Egypt. Well, he says, you know what? You are the 10th plague for the religion. He says, you are a plague for the religion. But he says, I'm glad you chose plague number 10. And I says, how come? He says, after plague number 10, Moses walked through the Red Sea. He says, you already got the blood on your doors. Jesus got, got the blood for you. He says, now you just need to go. Walk out of this. Get into the next season. And I kind of was embarrassed. Why did, I, why, 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 why did I complain in the first place? But God likes to know it, how we feel. He can see it, how we feel. But we, we should tell him. We shouldn't be afraid to tell him how we feel. If you're frustrated with him, tell him, tell him that. Be honest with him. If you just sit here grouching, you, you don't tell me what's wrong. I can never, I'll never find out. We need to talk. And that's, what we need, need, that's how we need to deal with Jesus. Talk to your Father in heaven. Mo Moses, when he was being born, God used Pharaoh to save his life. To spare his life. Have you ever thought about it? A lot of times there was people that have, uh, that, that walk with us to come to this point of life where we are now. God used Pharaoh to, to, to spare Moses' life. And later he killed Pharaoh because of Moses. <laughs> Moses had to be willing to walk away from some people. If you follow the, the true Jesus Christ, you'll have to leave some, some people behind. You'll have, sometimes you'll have to leave some, some people behind once you walk to the Red Sea. And what the, the amazing part was, the Lord told me, he says, if you're willing to walk into the Red Sea, he says, remember what happened. I'll fight for you. Pharaoh and all these people, they, they, they came after them right into the Red Sea. God came in there, he broke the wheels off of, their, off of their wagons, drowned them all. Moses didn't have to fight for, him, for it anymore. While they were still in Egypt, Moses had to fight for his people. But now that they were, they were moving out, they were, they were in God's perfect will. God fought for, fought for them. And I can see that if we trust the Lord into our next season of our church, of our lives, the Lord will fight for you. We just have to trust. Trust and obey. That's all we need to do. Let people walk away from some people that you have to walk away, away from. It's not fun. And when we get to the other side of the, the Red Sea, there's a Jericho. Not, not in the Red Sea, over the Jordan. Do we have a Jericho in our life? Now we've, we've seen we were supposed to leave some people behind. And if you come to, to, to Canaan, there's going to be a, there's, there's going to be a Jericho. What is your Jericho? Walk around that Jericho seven days in a row until it breaks down. I said yesterday, uh, 
my little Jericho that I would need to walk around. For me, it's a lot easier just have my phone on and listen to a message by Pastor Vlad and stuff than just sit, sitting down and, and studying the word. When I'm listening to a message online, I normally don't have encounters with the Lord. Where I have encounters with the Lord, like with this one, is when I sit down, I pray, I study the word. That's where the Lord shows up. And the Lord showed me very clearly, just listening to messages all the time, it was like, if you guys would invite me for, for supper, for a steak, and you would first shoot a steak, and then after you get take it out of your mouth, and I would eat it. That's disgusting, isn't it? I'm not saying it's bad to listen to a message. But God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have, he wants to have intimacy with you. And the next time we've done something, that, something wrong, we feel condemned about it. You know what? That is the devil. The Holy Spirit will never condemn you. The Holy Spirit will always show you, hey, there's Jesus. Isn't that amazing? There's no condemnation. If we've, if we've messed up, the Holy Spirit will always show, point, point us to Jesus. The devil will always point us to hell. Don't let him do that. And I would really emphasize and encourage encourage us as a church stand believing we see so many so many places in the New Testament Cornelius and his household was saved Zacchaeus and his household was saved sometimes our families might look kind of fuzzy not the way we like it but put our foot down and in faith Jesus, this is a promise. You and your household will be saved, and I stand in faith. For me and my house shall will serve the Lord. But we have to take off religious lasses for that faith. If I have religious lasses on, that faith will not work. If I have Moses' lasses on, that faith will not work. We should get the lenses of Jesus. And then that, that faith is going to work. Because that is a promise that Jesus made. And so many of us look, to, look at our kids with religious glasses and we try to fix everything they're doing. And we create, a, that, that is a perfect recipe for our disaster. Get off these religious glasses, get the glasses, lenses of Jesus and let Jesus do the work. We should back off. And if we, stand, stand, we keep standing in faith, if you have to stand in faith one year, and through, two years, three years, four years, five years, until you die, I'd rather die in faith than not standing in faith. A lot of people think, yeah, but after, after they're dead, nobody will be praying for my kids. When my wife was still alive, I heard her pray for our kids like every single day. And I was thinking, don't you have something else to pray and you're praying this again? I got tired of it. Like we have five kids and two daughter-in-laws at that time and one grandchild. And then she would, every day she would pray for the, grand, for the grandkids to come yet. You think those prayers were in vain? Absolutely not. I see a lot of things, a lot of times, some of those prayers, I remember so many of those prayers that she prayed. And a lot of those prayers, now that she's gone for almost five years already, I see them come to pass. It's happening again and again. Okay, that's what mom prayed for. That's why you're doing this. Isn't that powerful? Just get those religious glasses off and stand in faith. It will work. In Jesus' name. Let's stand up for prayer. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a wonderful morning. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, that the, Holy, that the presence of the, of the Lord 
is in the house. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has moved this morning. And then I just pray again that we will have new visions and that we will even be open, that we will be open to wild visions. Wild stuff can happen in this church. Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do, that we want to just release that, that we will be willing and that we will be obedient to the Holy Spirit, even if it looks weird. Even like Pastor Ernie, he, 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 felt, he didn't feel like getting up, but he, he put his flesh under submission to the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that we will be submissive to the Holy Spirit and that the fear of God will come over us. And I can just see if the fear of God will be over us and the fear of God will be in this church, we will prosper. Things will go. And I thank you, Father, that you've shown us that we need to go to, step into the next season, that we should step into the next level of, of our life. Jesus said, trust that, you, that we will be open. We will not just have ten, two people coming back. When there's 12, 12 spies going out, 10 came back. And they say we can't do it. But we will all be Caleb's and Joshua's. That we will be strong. That we will be encouraged. That we will be ready to go. And that we will be excited for the next thing that you have for us, Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.